chugga 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 Ah, don't mind me. I was just training. All right, quiet down, everybody. Why was I training? Well, since the last time that I tried to break a record, I have learnt a few things in the last video I released about downforce. So, now I must beat it again. But to do that, I needed a fast car. So I went and took one of the fastest looking standard bodies from the game of automation and reworked it. And some say, I may have gone a little too far. But let's start from the beginning and just go ahead and delete that. Yeah, good boy. What we're gonna do is work with the previous body that I made. So we've got it here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna clone the entire thing. And we're gonna get rid of the clone part here and we're gonna get rid of the clone part here, but, well, this is gonna give it away. <laughs> oh, yes. But we'll get to that later. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of all of our hard work of styling here, unfortunately, by selecting my new body. Oh, I have to redo everything now. At this point, you're probably wondering, why have I gone to so much effort to just undo all of the work I've done so far? Well, I just kind of wanted to, but there's two main things. One, I got rid of that weird body line. Now, I don't hate the body line that's usually there, but... I got rid of it. And two, if you're ever trying to remove this rear bit of paintwork here, you would have to use patchwork. And now you can run patchwork all the way up to the wheel fender and over, which was not an option before. Look, gone completely. Yes. But on top of that, I made it even easier. You can now just go in. You can just make it all invisible. Look at that, it's gone. Except for this little line here. I don't know why I decided to not get rid of that, but that's fine because you still have this. You can still cover everything up. It's, it's glorious. <coughs> Moving on. Now we have to do is just, you know, get it working again. At this point, you're probably like, oh great. I get to see how he makes the vehicle now. But analytics would show that people don't actually want to watch that. So here we have it! Great! Well, these are the wings that I've used, and I haven't got a huge amount on here because I don't actually need a whole lot. So just to let you know that it does actually look very pretty under here, I'm gonna go in and paint them all invisible. Now, it's not 100% the same as the other vehicle, but it didn't really need to be. Besides, you could just say that this is a different version of the car as it is a hybrid. And speaking of wings, we've only got a couple of tons, nearly three. And the reason why we don't have more of that is even though there's no explicit reference to downforces in the document that is linked in Wikipedia, I did find another page that has a little bit of a description on it. And it says something about like a limited of drag ratio of four to one. Luckily, automation actually has a drag thing here, but this is a power parasitic map, not a drag parasitic map. So out of the cars that won in 2021, its top speed, the Toyota, was 339 kilometers an hour. So I just added wings until this thing would do about a similar sort of speed, which is not to be sneezed at, it is still going over 200 miles per hour. Now the rest of this is very similar to the previous car, except I've made it so then the body doesn't have to be wider at all to fit in bigger tires. You can fit in the biggest, chunkiest tires you want. Also trying to replicate the car entirely. It's a little bit hard, but there was also more things I could do. I've learned more about automation since the last time I made this. It also fits within all the dimensions that are required as well. The thing is not longer than five meters. It is not wider than two meters. The height is the correct height that we need. It also this time has two seats. Yeah, turns out I didn't realize that was a requirement. So let's see what this car does around the automation test track. A 146, you know, that's actually a pretty decent time. But let's go ahead and send this over to BMNG. Oh, what a surprise. Huh, weird. All of the carbon fiber has come out like a slight green tint to it. That's odd. Eh, anyway, let's see what it drives like first without any intervention of uh, adding in. Oh, this thing does break rather nice and it turns rather nice. It all feels pretty good. I'm only using a controller at this point in time. Oh, oh that kick out. Oh, it kicks out so hard. That is brutal. No, no. Oh, okay, this would do better with a little bit of a steering wheel compared to just trying to brute force this with the controller. It is going to be a little bit easier. The graphs did show that this thing was going to oversteer a bit, but uh, it'd be easier to drive once we get the hybrid system in there because it'll help pull it out of the corner as opposed to just trying to push the dead weight that is the front of the vehicle around. And... Oh, oh, 
Oopsie daisies. There goes a multi-million dollar car. Yikes. Well, let's stop just talking about it and let's actually go and add it in. Tutorial time. Take your mod, click unpack, open an explorer, open it up. I'm gonna grab it from another one, but these will be available to you. These mod files. Now, this is similar to how Trice does it, but really there's only two ways of doing it. This way and a much more complicated way. There's, I believe there's another way, but I haven't been able to recreate that. But yeah. It gets really complicated, like making faux wheels and then attaching the faux- Yeah, either way, usually it drives the front tires anyway, so this works for us. Copy these two files and then drag them in. Now, the reason why we've got the lure in here is thank God for Groundhog on Discord. Really came through and helped me out here. This will allow me to actually put a limit in from when it'll start. If we have a look at the rules, the general gist of it is, is in dry weather, you're only allowed to use your hybrid over 120 kilometers an hour. So if I remember correctly, this is meant to be 30, I think. I can't remember. But let's go in, hit Control R here, Control W, and then additional modification, EV motor, boys. And if we bring up this bad boy, we can see here that this is actually a proper functioning EV. And power on, that works. Regen works a little bit, but hopefully over 120 kilometers an hour, it'll kick in. There you go, look at that. Did you see that? It's about 120 kilometers an hour that came in perfectly. Once again, thank you, Groundhog. I would not have been able to figure that out myself. Though there is still an issue. I've been able to get like regen to work a lot, all these sorts of different things. But what I haven't been able to do is to get it to regen the amount that these sorts of vehicles do, which is a mahoosive amount. So instead, I just put on just a really large battery. So let's see how this thing handles. It has to be over 120 kilometers an hour for this to work, which is going to be, hmm, how do we say problematic? Not quite what we want. Ooh, get a little bit sideways. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, bugger. That's fine. Can we go? Uh, just let me drive. Oh, I hate this impact detected garbage. That's fine. All right, we're getting back out. Oh, a little bit wayward. You know, I'm going to turn the powertrain back on because I don't have a battery ready thingy. So I can't remember when I set the battery to run out. I think I was in the middle of testing the last time I touched this. So it might actually run out of batteries uh, rather, rather quickly. So we're going to go around corner gonna do some more powering and it should run uh, run out rather quickly and then down the back straight and if we have battery limitations it should run out there you go look at that it's already run out so yeah i'm gonna go fiddle with that which is under engine f, f which i might actually change the name of that at some point and then under battery i've got this set to currently 0.5 so let's just turn that to 50 there all done and if we take this around for a little bit of a drive you'll see that it'll now last the entire distance man this car is brutal but it's all good and we can adjust the wings and everything. We know all that goodness now that we know how to do stuff. And down the back straight. Yeah, look at that. We're not running out of power at all. Fantastic. It's also a very weak engine as well. Because it only needs to give 200 kilowatts. That is actually the limitations of how much power we're allowed to put through our electric motor at the front. So, all's well. That ends well. I could show you the power graph. <laughs> but that requires a lot of effort. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Whoopsie daisies. <sighs> My B. If you don't want to find out how powerful your electric motor is, get the torque curve app. Then under vehicle config, just turn off your regular engine. And then find out the beam NG is being really and won't actually show you. Great. <sighs> you know what? Screw you, BMNG. Let's go take this to the Nürburgring. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I do see the cognitive dissonance here in this being a Le Mans car and we're taking it to the Nürburgring. It's just the analytics likes this one a little bit more. Now, first off, you're going to notice that the top speed of this car is not really the 330 to 340 it was meant to be. That's because the downforce is all wrong. And I was able to get it bounced. I went back and forth so many times to get this car balanced just right. It's able to do everything. Now, look here. You can't see the inside of the corner there. I just wanted to point out that, yes, I made the haunches on the front wheel fenders maybe just a little too big. And from the inside, it only is affecting a few corners. 
I'll probably set the camera a little bit higher before I release it onto the BeamNG repository. But anyway, back to the whole downforce thing. I was able to get it, you know, balanced enough. The problem is, is it was always giving like the full downforce to the front but nowhere near enough downforce to the rear. So I would have to go into the tuning afterwards in BeamNG and tell it to reduce the front downforce, but that didn't change the fact that it was still way too sketchy on the front and I was not getting nearly enough downforce on the rear. I tried all my tricks to get that to do what I wanted it to do and it just wasn't going to do it. But we were able to still get quite fast in these corners. Now I could have taken this one at full speed, but it just wasn't going to make it easy. So I ended up just scrapping that corner and braking beforehand but I mean still the car is very fast now I want to point out some extra things I did here as you can see I've animated the wheel the other one you can see blinking away is the uh, RPM gauge light cluster thing and if my brain worked properly it would be able to tell you that what I meant to say there was shift a lie now, I am going to do a tutorial probably on this at some point, but I haven't quite worked out the kinks as yet. And BeamNG is not good, so it's always flawed. Now here, we finally come up to the part which I usually really hate, but the car is very balanced. It'll turn in so sharply, maybe sometimes a little too sharp. So you do have to turn the front grip down a little bit with the aero slider. But you can see there, finally I got through my most hated corner without there being a single issue. If only the rest of the lap also had no issues. Now that's coming up and I don't want to spoil too much, but you can see that the car is quite twitchy at the front end. It uh, wants to turn very, very abruptly. And that's because of that whole aero and balance thing. But there's the trade-off. It gives you all of the control you want. If you can just be really, really awesome and control this thing properly, it's not actually going to be that big of an issue. The car just turns in. Look at that. Like, I'm flooring a lot of this. Now, here's also a very tricky corner. Now, the switch back in the weight shift is usually a really big problem. So you'll see there that I was very easy on the throttle because that corner usually causes a big issue. So I'm with this one into the left and then into the... Wait, sorry. Right and then into the left. The weight shifts are usually a really big problem and usually sets this thing just completely spinning like a top and it's a real big pain in the butt but I am trying to um, pan out time because I know what's about to happen this corner. I outskilled the car or should I say the car was not magic like I thought it was. Now, for the rest of this race, I'm going to notice that this thing has a weird pull and it's also a little bit inconsistent and it's causing it to be really tricky now to keep in a straight line. It was tricky before, but now it is considerably harder to drive and you can see that I am struggling. This is a straight line for the most part. Now, corners are a little bit easier because the wheels load up and they become predictable once you start going to the corners, but it's in the straight lines, but that is a major problem. And I am able to like, as you can see here, nice and smooth through the corners, even hitting the curb accidentally is absolutely fine. Getting it twice, apparently. Getting it even up here into the carousel. Wow, I'm actually really getting a whole lot better at the carousel now. You can see here, nice and smooth, waiting for the power on, and I get it right. Yes, oops, no, I hit the curb on the exit, but that's fine. That actually probably wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have collided with that wall. And given the thing, hmm, unique handling characteristics might be a nice way of putting it. But uh, what I would like to say is this thing <laughs> was it's like a challenge video go take this car it'll be on the meme and g repository whenever it goes live those guys take forever to make things live sometimes and uh, collide with the wall a little bit and see how mm, fun could be a word that this car becomes and you can see here totally worth being on a youtube clip, clip compilation there and that's not the last time that happens either these little bits of mess ups here and there then again it happens Ugh, this is such an annoyance but we were able to get through youtube corner at least perfectly even this corner we did fairly well. This car is still actually though very skittish. As you can see here, a little bit of a correction. What? But in the inside camera it didn't seem so bad, but on the outside camera, yeah, you can see how scary that really was. 
This thing is... Uh, I want I want to go back. I want to do the actual aero fix and not try to work within automation's limitations, which at the moment is very high because automation is just going through hmm, a phase right now. And I think the phase is not going to go away because the devs think that they've done nothing wrong. But here, clearly, we're using the game outside of the normal working parameters that they would expect people to be in. But people are the ones that decide how they use something, not the people that made it. But anyway, here we go. The final corner coming down the back straight. And I'm realizing how much of a pull this thing now has. I think I've hit the curbs maybe a little too hard as well, which added to the issue. You can see here that, oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my speedo and I do have it in top speed, uh, top gear, which is sixth. I don't need to be in sixth, but it'll allow me to go that little bit higher than what the RPM would normally let me. And across the line. I have broken the previous lap record, which I believe I said at six minutes 50 which is impressive when you consider that my top speed was about 40 kilometers an hour slower. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. I'm probably going to do a stream at some point where I'm going to fix the car a little bit, you know, get a little bit technical, deep dive into it, and then do a hot lap. If you want to see that sort of stuff, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Though, then again, most people viewing my stuff already are subscribed, so thank you very much for being return viewers. As for the rest of you, also, maybe tap that like button. I am excited to see how this goes. Uh, that stream will probably come up in uh, the next couple of weeks at some point. But for now, I hope you have enjoyed this video so far. And I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye.